Okay. All right, should be good. Let me just double check everything. Audio level looks all right-ish. Can always lower it in a minute if we need to. That's posted. I'm not posting to Twitter today. Just gonna have a small, small comfy stream while you suffer me reading loads and loads of text. Episode 1. Been ages since I last played this game. Play first turn about this. <clears throat> um. Exercise ball has been a pain this morning. There we go. There's no jong. I can't get caught. Not like this. Why is it auto scrolling? I've got to find someone to pin this on. Let's blame it on Deffy. Blame it on Deffy. Someone like Deffy. Here he is. I'll make it look like he did it. Let's go. Let's do this. I'm 100% not going to regret this whatsoever. Uh, August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Goopy's not here. Boy, am I nervous. Yeah, me too, Phoenix. Me too. Oh, yes, Mia. Right. Right, let's start, shall we? <laughs> Hiya, Chief. Phew. Uh, I'm glad I made it on time. I'm not going to do voice acting, by the way. It's far too... Uh, far too... Um, too many excuses. I'm just gonna not do it. That's my excuse. Uh, what well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client. Let's go, Jowser. We're gonna we're gonna do law. Goopy's got all his books over there. Look at him. <laughs> Morning, Ridley. Um, thanks, thanks. No pressure, guys. It's it's getting on. It's getting there. I've, I left my dehumidifier running, so I've kind of just dried dried my throat out. It's fine. It, it will sort itself out. I might just have might just have to drink a few. Anyway, actually, it's because I owe him a favor. Of course, it is. A favor. <gasps> you mean you knew the defendant before this case? Are we allowed to do that? I'm not tweeting. I'm not tweeting today. We're, we're having a small, comfy stream. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. It's because he's always getting into trouble. That's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's, it's, it's Deffy. This is Deffy. Look at him. Deaf despair. Uh, um, no, no. There you go. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. Sounds like he wants to die. See, it's Deffy. Look at him. Except for this, this doesn't say Nick. This says Goopy. Hey, hey there, Larry. See? Deffy. It says Deffy right here. <laughs> uh, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What's wrong? What's wrong, Larry? It's all over. I'm finished. Don't, don't you do it, Kathy. Don't do it. I'm finished now. I'm finished. I can't live in a world without her, I can't. Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Who took Goopy? You gotta tell me, Nick. Who took my baby away? Hmm, the person that were responsible for your girlfriend's death. Who could it be? The newspapers say it was... <gasps> you. Hi, Rascal. 
My name is Phoenix Wright, except for it's not. It's actually Peppermint Cordial, attorney at law. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. We've only got to solve a murder, guys. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself into trouble. So it's just like Deffy. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault, he just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. Oh. That I owe him one, which is, uh, that and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two still. Shh, shh, it's court proceedings. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, the, the defense, defense is ready, guys. The defense is ready. We 100% know what we're doing. H Hootie, what are we doing? Pretty, pretty, help me out here. Uh, uh, Alright, okay. You can't object, we haven't started yet. <laughs> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I'm definitely not nervous, guys. We've got this. You object. <laughs> You'll conduct uh, during this trial to decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank you, Your Honor. We got this. We got this. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ass ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. We're not ready, guys. And shaking, eyesight fading. So weak. Tests will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Uh, Larry Butts is the defendant, isn't he? That's how law works. That's Larry Butts. Yeah, see, see, I, I went to law school. I, I have a license somewhere. Yeah, Hootie's got the Hootie's got this. It's fine. Just keep your wits about you, and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? <gasps> I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. I didn't read them. There was a case report. Uh, uh oh. No, no way! I forgot. <gasps> Drawing a total blank here. If only we had the paper that we could reference. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. <laughs> Truth is, he's the attorney. <laughs> possibly, possibly. I mean, that's 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 canon to Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright's just the face. It's my and her sisters that are usually the attorney. Oh, the victim. Of course, I know the victim's name. It's uh, I just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab. Okay, I'm gonna press tab right now. See, look, I have a badge. I am an attorney. See? See? Nobody would believe me if I didn't have it. Uh, Cindy, that's her name. Cindy. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Cinder Block, that's it. Cindy Stone. The victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me what was the cause of death. Oh, uh, she died because she was blunt head trauma. Struck once by a blunt object. 
<laughs> Go for it, Ridley. <laughs> I could pin. I could. I could actually. Um. Um. It's too late to do it now. Just get me. Get me a transparent PNG, and I'll add it in a second. <laughs> I can just pin it to my to my lapel. Anyway, she was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You are a fairly competent lawyer. <laughs> Seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Uh, me, and, me and you both, Phoenix. Me and you both. Well then, first, the question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne. Is his first name Max? I should play Max Payne at some point as well. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? It was a statue of the Finca, was it not? Yes, the murder weapon was this statue of the Finca. Uh, it was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Right, be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Uh, yeah, I we, we did this before. The rather heavy statue in the shape of the finger. Blood loss. Objection! Uh, Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. What do I do now? We, we, what do we do now? Pay attention, you don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. Well, this ain't gonna end poorly at all. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Well, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Hang on. Ahem. The ring's broken. There we go. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet. Cleopatra and Mark Anthony? What did I Caesar? Uh, didn't they all die? <laughs> I wasn't dumped, she just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me, ever. This sounds, yeah, this is definitely deafening and goopy. What are you talking about? What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. He would, Payne would know, just look at him. He's a ladies man. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. <gasps> oh no. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? The plot is thickening. Lies, all of it, lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. <gasps> Not Paris. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on the 30th of the 7th. This is the wrong way around, guys. Come on, let's do dates properly. Hang on. I'm check my Discord. Uh, where is it? There it is. And I'll just do this for a second. So I can go over here. I can make item scenes now? When did that update happen? Right, there we go. See? See? I have my badge now, guys. Thank you, Ridley. I'm a real attorney now. <laughs> right, um, indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. No way. The 
victim was a model, but did not have a large income. That's a lie. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. <laughs> Are we sure that this isn't Goopy and Deffy? Because this sounds like it's Goopy and Deffy. Shut up. Shut up, Kathy. This is my badge. Who can get his own badge? I'm gambling it. Daddy's sugar. Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. I wonder what that's like. Uh, she took the money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude. We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? <gasps> right, I don't think you want him to answer that question. Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. We must object. How do we object? Our client has no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is relevant to this case. Dun dun dun, we got it. It was a, it was a joke, Kathy. It was a joke, dude. Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That's cheating, she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. <laughs> Poor butts. Yeah, and when I meet, wait, no. What? Why is it? Why is it? Ah. <sighs> wait, hang on. Uh... All right, other way. Oh no, no. No, <laughs> I want to go back. How do I go back? Okay, that would be what was doing that, okay. Uh, save here quickly. Don't, don't know. Yes, quite. Uh, okay. Uh, so apparently, I don't. I thought there would be a uh, uh, the text history, but I don't know where it is. So, yeah, they definitely said some words there that had totally no relevance to the case. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. All right, we're good now. We're good. We should be fine. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Or did you, or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. This guy's never been to court before, clearly. Uh-oh, he went. What do I do? Uh, uh, answer the question, but... We must send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. <gasps> Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. <laughs> chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. This guy's actually Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Objection! Your Honor, the defendant is lying. <gasps> lying? What makes you say that? Show me the evidence. <gasps> a witness. The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? Man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. <gasps> dun dun dun. Uh, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Is he wearing sandals? That's the ultimate crime. Order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. Who's the witness? This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sh Shawit to the stand. Oh, it's another bot. The man? No, he's not. Mr. Schwit. You sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Yes, yes, newspapers. I mean, this guy definitely looks like he sells newspaper subscriptions. This guy is... Now... Chawit? 
that's his name, is not Shawit. Sawit? Sawit? So sus. Uh, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. It's testimony. Let's go. We must we must be very thorough with our investigation here. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I look inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. Uh, I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Hang on a minute. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. <laughs> Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. How convenient. Nobody has a cell phone in Japan. What are you talking about? Uh, aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yeah, but this was a cordless one. Duh. Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. See, you see? It was a cordy phone. No, a, cord a cordy -less phone. Yeah. There was no cordy there. I'm innocent, guys. Uh, the phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. From noon to 6pm on the day of the crime. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes. What, what, what do you want, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Huh. Cross-examination. All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Let's not fuck it up. What am I meant to do again? <laughs> All right, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? And that witness must have lied in his testimony. Huh. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove it's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction. Alright, first, find a contradiction. And then, once you found the contradicting evidence, present it. Okay. Open the court records with tab, and then point out contradict. Okay, we got this. We can do this. I did not place myself at the scene of the crime. What are you talking about, Lurker? Okay, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Okay, hang on. What do we have? <gasps> the time of death. Here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. How do I present? Objection! Found the body at 1 p.m., you sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death was sometime after 4 p.m. <sighs> There was nobody to, uh, there was no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this free hour gap? <gasps> Got him. Oh, that, that, uh, uh. <sighs> This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. No, but he, he said he remembered exactly. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? Uh, well, uh, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. Yeah, go us. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. 
C31 and their whole story falls apart. That's too convenient, though. No, uh, nobody looks. No, there, there was no clock on the wall. I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Time of discovery. Let's go. Where you go? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Interesting. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. We may, uh, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Okay. You know what to do. We must find... We must find the contradiction. I already know what it is. See, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice coming from the television, huh? That's convenient. Objection. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this, rec this record proves it. <gasps> Couldn't have heard a television or a video. <gasps> Well, uh, the defense has a point. We definitely got this guy. <laughs> Do you have an explanation? No, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite, quite puzzling, yes. Wait, I remember now. Okay. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. Because he definitely had that to begin with. That and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. <laughs> it, uh, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Very well, Mr. Schwit. Shall we? Let's hear your testimony once more with feeling. Alright, let's go. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? <gasps> yeah. The murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the... Come on, really? Oh, yeah, no, no. The thinker is a clock, actually. Uh, the killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon, the killer used it to hit the victim. Oh, I can press. I forgot I can press. Hang on a second. Can I press? Table clock. Was there a clock at the scene? This is the first I've heard of it. <gasps> Yeah, the murder weapon, the killer used it to hit the victim. Okay, can I just present this? Objection! Objection! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was this statue, which is conveniently now a clock. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? You have your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? I'm a lawyer. Just answer the question. Tell me the truth. Saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Oh, well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness' testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Uh... Yes. Yes, I do. Your Honor, 
there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hands. <sighs> Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. Yes, quite. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. <gasps> You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove it. Prove that I went there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. <gasps> you struck her with a clock and the, the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. <sighs> that was the sound you heard. <gasps> Dun, 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 dun. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. We're definitely not making this up on the spot. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Sawit, uh, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice has burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless. Just look at the witness's face. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, that, that day, I, look, I, that, 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 no, I mean, uh, I was a toupee. <laughs> Shut up. I hate you. It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her and he should burn. Burn! Give him death. <laughs> Making stuff up on the spot is how Japanese law works, is it? Okay, good to know. Order. Order in the court. Your Honor, a moment, please. <laughs> there isn't a shred of, shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honor. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? Uh, the whole case is riding on this. Better think it through carefully, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Schwartz heard was definitely this clock. Uh, a fact which is clear if you simply... Uh, uh, Um, I'm not bald. Shut up. I don't have a toupee. Um, uh, let's sound the clock now. <gasps> it's di Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think. It's 8.25. Strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. There's a three hour difference. Because it was Paris time, clearly. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha! You forgot one thing. Uh-oh. What's he talking about? He's got money, guys. He's got money. Screw the rules. He has money. While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it's actually running such and such many hours fast. Go. Oh. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? If only I could combine evidence. Mr. Wright, it seems like you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I can't let you indict. Indict? Is that the word? Indict the witness? Unfortunately. Objection. This ends the cross examination of Mr. Frank. No! I 
come all the way down here to testify and look look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. <laughs> I almost had him. If only we had more evidence. If only Gumshoe had done a better job. Sorry, Larry, I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast. Chief! Chief's come to save the day. Isn't that right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. It's over, Chief. We can't do it. Can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. That doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through. Why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right? Right, right. Get it? Right, right. Ha. Ah. Yes, I can think of a reason. Because it was not slow. It was fast. Wait, I got it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it right. Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? There's a piece of evidence in the courtroom that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. <gasps> Tough words, let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Boom. Watch out! The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. <gasps> when it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. Nine hours, Lurker, what are you talking about? The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. Hey, Mapus. The victim hadn't reset their clock uh, since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in, the, uh, in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Schritt, or should I say, Mr. Did it. <gasps> dun dun dun, we got him. Oh. Well. <laughs> order, order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness, is currently comatose. Oh, he's arrested and been taken away. Good, good. I'm glad. He he had a he had a moment, guys. Very well. Mr. Wright, yes, Your Honor. I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone uh, complete the defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. We're we're definitely good at our job. Yep, yep. We 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 as Peppermint Cordial are definitely good at our job. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, guilty. Oh, I mean, uh, not guilty. Yeah, not guilty. Yay! I'm really glad that in Japan, when you get like a not guilty, they drop confetti from the ceiling. It's, it's very, um, it's very nice of them. And with that, this court is adjourned. Turns out that Frank uh, was a common burglar. He wasn't a newspaper salesman at all. We didn't even need a flamethrower. Posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. The conviction rate is 99.9%, .9%, is it? Okay. That day. When Larry went to her, her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit uh, let himself in to do his dirty work. <gasps> While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, he grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find and bashed her over the head. The victim slipped and hit her head. No, that didn't happen. The, uh... Uh, August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court. Yeah. 
I can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. We did it, guys. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. And... And myself. Yep, definitely myself. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. Yeah, you just stood around and just told me to press tab a bunch. Uh, it's been a while since I've been a, seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. She's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. He's probably really upset. My life is over. See, yep, told you. Yep. My life is over. Larry, supposed to be happy, what's wrong? Nick, don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. <laughs> Wait, what? No, that's bad. Don't, don't die, Larry. Larry, your innocence. The clay, the, blah, blah, blah. The case is closed. But my Cindy Windy's gone mad. Gone forever. Or Cindy Windy. Or Larry Warry. So, uh, never mind. Never mind, Larry. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just find another lady. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> uh, Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, Innocence. That, that's a bad joke. Because, yeah. yeah. I really owe you one. See, look, he's recovered already. So happy. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie. He's already asking a woman out for a date, see? He's recovered, just like Daffy. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Where's my dinner? Huh? Huh? Here, take this. It's a present. I always wanted a murder weapon as a present. Present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Oh. You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And... She was just playing me for a fool. Don't that just make you want to cry? Uh, it's so sad. It's so sad, Larry. It's so sad. Are you, sh are you so sure? They squeeze me? Nobody says they squeeze me these days. Rascal, make X squeeze me a thing again. I think she fought quite a lot of you in her own way. Otherwise, why would she have kept the clock? Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. I'm not, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? God damn it, right, right. Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, what the heck is she talking about? It's... Definitely this. Watch out. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chance to her. Cause cause you just do you just do rascal. It's your job now. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made, Larry. Remember? You just told us about it. And she took it with her when she trapped. Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. But it's heavy, Larry. It's heavy. It's a heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey Nick, I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Because you definitely had other choices. <laughs> really I am, thanks. It's alright Larry, it's alright. I hope that made him feel a little better. Hang on a second. There we go. Hey, squeeze me. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realise things change depending on how you look at them. People too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. They're always guilty. All we can do is believe in them. 
And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Believe in the me who believes in you. That's that's how that's how lawyers work. It's it's it's. And then when you start losing, you're just getting your giant robot. That's how, that's 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 how uh, that's how that's how law works, guys. Trust me, I have a badge. Right, listen, learn, grow strong. Now this just reminds me of Final Fantasy XIV. Think, feel, hear. Uh, never let go of what you believe in. Never. Unless you believe in NFTs, you should probably let go of that belief. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? I guess so. Let's go get some food. See? Yeah, let's go get some dinner. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry. You were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Part at least, yeah. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? <gasps> dun, dun. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me. <laughs> I didn't know it then, but that clock was sooner going to be at the center of another incident. <gasps> Dun dun dun, and my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry? One promise I won't be able to keep. <gasps> dun dun dun. Well, we finished the game now, guys. We've, uh, we've successfully completed Phoenix Wright. Oh, there's a second episode, never mind. Brand new episode has been added. I would like to save my. Yeah, let's save. Turnabout sisters. All right. Bring, 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 bring. Hello, this is Maya. Hey, Maya, it's me. <gasps> Maya and Mia. What's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Well, lonely, and it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. Yeah, time for film Chronicles. Chronicles. Uh, that's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favour to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you? Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So, what is it this time? It's a clock. <gasps> a clock? Yeah, it's made to look like the statue of the Finca, and it tells you the time. Thought you might like it, you always like toys. <laughs> hey, I'm not a little girl anymore. No, no. Uh, you know I'm only teasing. Uh, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clock work out, sorry. I put some papers inside instead. <gasps> papers? It's a secret evidence. Uh, is that the evidence then? Hmm. Well, there's a possibility that it might turn out that way, yes. Can you come by the office tonight, say nine, to pick it up? I'll be in a pre-trial meeting until then. How convenient. Okay, sis. But I expect dinner. Something good. Like burgers. Ah. I could really go for a good burger, too. We should all get burgers, guys. Let's all get burger. Okay, okay. We'll hit the usual joint. Alright, it's a deal. Okay, sis. See you soon. It's not that. Nice. It's not withholding evidence. It's just conveniently storing evidence. Yep, I'll be waiting. Beep. Conversation recorded. September 5. September 5? That was ages ago. Well, it was ages after the first one. Anyway. Uh, 9.27 a.m. That's definitely going to be important. September 5th, 8.57 p.m. Fay and Code Law Offices. You can put burger on your pizza. Just put burger on your pizza, Rascal. It's fine. Now, Miss Fay, I'll take what's mine. The papers, please. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Fay, you're a poor liar. 
Why, I see it right over there. That must be the Vinca that swallowed those papers. How could you know? Ho, 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 ho. You are not, uh, you are not cogniferous. What is that? Cog cogniferous? That's a weird word. Of my background. Gathering information is my business, you see. I should have been more careful. <gasps> my dear Miss Faye, I am so very sorry. But I'm afraid I must ask you for one more thing. You must die. Your eternal silence. Farewell. <sighs> Man, red, white, and blue. September 5th, 9.08 p.m. Uh-oh, I'm late, huh? That's strange, guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over, so we should all go out for dinner. That smell. Blood. Mia, maybe she's in her office. Damn, uh, move. Let's go. To the office. That smell. Blood. This. Someone's there. <gasps> Chief! Chief! Snake! That's so sad. Who are you? And she fainted. Strange girl dropped that cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Rip. F in chat, guys. F in chat. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then all too quickly it began to fade. Until finally she was cold. <laughs> yeah, why couldn't it have been deafy? Chief. Some shards of glass are scattered on the floor. They seem to be the remains of a glass light stand. Oh, it le even leaves a thing. Cool. Oh, no, it doesn't. Can I read the books? No clues. It's encrusted with dried blood. How ironic that this became the murder weapon. Again. There's a large building right across from the office. The Gatewater Hotel, a nice, luxurious pal place. Not palace. <laughs> Ridley. <laughs> oh, okay, right, so I can, like, drag it around. This is a bit better. I feel, I feel like this game's a little less um, difficult when it highlights interactable things as Ella. Chief's chair, a simple, functional design, feels pretty good to sit in too, as everyone is knocked over. Chief, it's hard seeing her like this, but if there are any clues here, she was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker, lying next to her, must have been the murder weapon. The thinker added to the court record. Hmm, there's some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of the glass stand lying broken in the back of the room. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. Hmm? Piece of paper, it must have fallen from Maya's hand. What could it be? Oh. It's very clearly. Wait, uh, yeah. This is, uh, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't treat, tweet this stream. We're just having a good, good, comfy time, guys. Uh, a word written in blood on this scrap of paper. Mia, right? This, this, this note that says Mia. I mean, if he gets one more kill, he gets like. Uh, um. No, usually you need to get like you need to get like five of something. You need five stamps to redeem like the uh, 
a free chocolate bar or whatever. Uh, this piece of paper is a receipt from a department store dated yesterday. I think that's enough snipping around for now. We're going to get in trouble if we do anymore. I better call the police and find out what that girl was doing here. Free, free kills gives you a UAV. <laughs> that sounds like a COD reference. We're going to call the cops now, guys. Don't worry. Oh. Oh, maybe not. Maybe we're not going to call the cops just yet. We can move around the room. We can have a look at this bookcase. All the chief's important documents are packed in here. This is where she filed her case records on recent rulings. It's the computer, guys. The files are in the computer. They're in the computer. Surprisingly, the chief was never good with machines. But all she used this PC for was email. She picked up this ancient model at some garage sale for practically nothing. The Fane Co. Ledger Book. Everything is written in the Chief's ultra neat handwriting. It's a small office, but it makes a good bit of money. Alright, now we shall phone the police. Right, I better call the police. That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. It looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police, please, come quick. Well, what was that? Someone screaming from outside the window? She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. <gasps> We're being set up. The phone receiver is missing a few screws. I better not use it. painful to look, but I have to for my sake. It looks like she was hit in the head with a blunt weapon. Didn't we do all this? Your brother died instantly. So, what, what are we missing now? I don't... Perfectly normal office desk. The chief had a very particular policy about office decor. Spend big on 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 the on stuff the clients use, but keep your own stuff simple. I lost that whole sentence somewhere. I don't know where it went. Well, now what? Nothing left to interact with. I could just move. Exclamation mark. That girl just now, where'd she go? I put her right there on the sofa. Uh oh. I hope she didn't run out. Didn't run on me. There, there she is. Yipes. Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but who are you? Okay, I work it. It's my affair. Maya? Maybe you look at a badge next stream. <laughs> Uh, he's still working on his law degree. Look at him. Look, he's, he's, he's studying. He's not a natural genius like I am. Is this, is this Maya? 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 Maya Fay? So Maya was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt. Definitely. I never thought there'd be use for evidence like this outside of the courtroom, except for that one time that we presented a clock to butts. Objection! Before Maya died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. That's my name! Matsuri. 
Ah, yeah. Mat Mat Matsuri, yeah, that's how you pronounce it, yeah? Maya. Yeah. That's her name. Why? Why would she write my name? Because you're the murderer. Please, just calm down. Why would she write my name? Uh oh. Now I've done it. Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. So, so her name is is Matsuri Yabai. Is that, is that how it works? Yabe, Yabe. The police sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze, police! Hands on your head. Oh, it's only Gumshoe. Never mind. All right, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe. See, he's from Boston, even though he's in Japan. What an, what an odd name. We received a report from the building across the way, see? Yar. It's like those old uh, noir detective films. Um, uh, got a person saying they saw a murder. Must have been the woman I saw. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch. Great. Just great. Maya, wait, she wouldn't have... Nah. Well, excuse me. <gasps> Eek. This word mean anything to you? No, no, it doesn't. Gumshoe's gonna be like, you're the murderer. Uh, that, that's my name. <gasps> Victim drew this here note in her own blood, see? But dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name, see? <laughs> see, I told you guys. Killer, I'm not... Case closed, you're coming down to the precinct. <laughs> What? Wait, no! Come shoot! Maya's youngest sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6th, 9.07 a.m. Wow, they have Paul Maya locked up like a criminal. Well, she did kill her sister, you know, so... Oh, it's you, the lawyer. Go good morning. <sighs> she looks so tired. <sighs> Are you going to be my attorney? I guess we have to. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Not a chance. It's up to you. I better give it to her straight. It's up to you. I'm to you. I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one in trouble here. They're never going to believe me, are they? Even you. When you found me in the office, you looked at me like I had done it. <gasps> no, we didn't. Did I look at her like that? I don't remember. No, I never thought. It's okay. I understand. And I also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? That we're a genius. That's the, better be that we're a genius. I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. We were amazing. Um, I was I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. <gasps> ah. So he crashed and burned. No, no, we didn't. We, we, we 100% aced it. He said, see, see, we're a genius, guys. I told you, told you she thought we were a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. Yep, that's 100% us. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Huh, sounds like it was fun. Well, I don't know who to go to if I ever get into trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to, wait, give him three more years. <laughs> wow. That is unless you want to be found guilty. Wow, fat. Cheers. Cheers, Chief. You're the best. Saying we're a genius and then to not use us. Great. That's what she said. Sorry, I didn't mean to insult you. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit by and watch. When I think of the person who did this to Mia. I know. Okay. Give me a 
landing zone and make in this room. Smile for the camera. This guard monitors the visitor's room. He hasn't moved an inch. Real pro, this guy. He's actually in the cam uh, ma mannequin. Just the mannequin dressed up. Okay. Let us talk. The day of the crime. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes, let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence, yes. That clock shaped uh, like the finger. The one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in the case? Um, right, she said something about that. I remember. Do you want to hear about it in her own voice? She's a psychic medium. Her own voice? Yes, I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone. You've recorded it? That's illegal. I forgot how to delete those things. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes. What's with that outfit? I'm not a junior detective. I'm a full... I'm an attorney. A defense attorney. Uh, oh, this. This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. Acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it that you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. That's what all the strange people say. I'm a spirit medium in training. <gasps> See, strange person. A spirit medium. I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. See, yep. Me and Phoenix on the same wavelength here. Yeah. Your cell phone. Let's go. So you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone? Let's hear it. Right. Oh, I just remembered that detectives took my cell phone. Sorry. All right. Of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. Look at that. It's a memo. Alright. Spirit mediums, let's go. So you're an alkali, uh, a medium in training. That's right. The Fae family, especially the women, have always been sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second. You said the Fae family? So, Mia was into this stuff too? Of course. Or is it Maya? Is it Mia? Maya? I don't know. Uh, she left the manor to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class too. I had no idea. That's why she was so good at being a lawyer, guys. She only, she only took murder cases, clearly. Wait a second. You're a real honest to goodness spirit medium with ESP and all that? Yes, in training. Well, can't you contact, uh, Maya, Maya's spirit then? We can just ask her who killed her. There you go. Easy. I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm. I thought that would be too easy. Um, something the matter? Uh, I was wondering, could I ask you a favour? No. No, you can't. This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And, well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? Hmm. Sure. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much. I have no one else to turn to. Say, so, what about your parents? I see. Don't worry. Leave it to me. I got this. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow at 10. That's not enough time. What, tomorrow? Tomorrow? What if this guy refuses? They told me if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until 4 this afternoon. Visiting hours are almost up, but better hurry. Right, I'll be back. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Sorry, I know it must be hard. No, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Ah, oh, that's kind of depressing. Let's see. That morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold onto a PC evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the finger clock that Larry made. It practically qualifies as a serial murder by now. 
So then, when did you arrive at the office? It was right around nine. Uh, the lights were off and I could smell blood. Then I found her, my sister. Thanks. That's all I needed to hear for now. That was a waste of a conversation. Back. Let's go to Grossberg. Or is it Grossberg? It's definitely Gross. Grossberg. Let's go. September 6th. Grossberg Law Offices. According to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. Must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. Not to mention running an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. Look at this guy. The painting has been... Uh, that painting has been bugging me ever since I stepped in here. The oil painting is so... F no, the oil paint is so thick it's practically giving me a stuffed nose. I'm sure the price is not to sneeze at either, for that matter. Expensive potted plant. No idea what kind of plant it is, but it's probably the most expensive one available. This is like about a table. An elegant ebony case, and if I'm not mistaken, that light is made of solid gold. Even I can tell someone, someone here has got money to burn. Ooh. A solid mahogany desk. I knew it was mahogany. The wood's been polished to a deep luster. It's not a real desk unless it's made of mahogany, guys. Expensive looking mahogany bookshelves. Filled with expensive looking books. Funny, they don't look like they've ever been read. Let's move on. Mahogany is a good material, alright? The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey, you there. This is a crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Um, sorry. Don't I know you from somewhere? I, I was here yesterday. Wait, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No. No. Phoenix Wright. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? Ah, guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That Butts guy, he was a killer and you're no killer, right? No, Butts was innocent. He was proven innocent. God damn it, gumshoe. Uh, right. And you were Detective Suede Shoes. Oh, Gumtree, that's where he puts all his stuff. Um, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe. Right, at your service. Hang on. That's Detective Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, uh, get my name right. Don't go calling me Dick. Hey, Dick, get over here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Be right there. Um, ahem. Uh, you're her lawyer, right, pal? If you've got business here, you better do it quick. Phew, he thinks I'm uh, Mayor's lawyer. I'm gonna... Uh, where you go? About Miss Faye, do you have an autopsy? Mm, you want to know the results, eh? Of course I do. Now, don't you look at me like that. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. Alright, alright. Uh, you can see the report, but that's all. Yay, autopsy report. Uh, about my... Uh, I'm looking forward to the trial. So. Hang on a second.
Alright, okay, we're back. Apparently, someone has some people over, so they're very, very loud. Um. Very powerful, but this is one trial you aren't going to win. Why'd you say that? The city's put Prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. <gasps> Not Edgeworth. Edgeworth, I'm sure you know what that means. You being a lawyer and all. Tell me about this Edgeworth guy. Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? Of course I do. 100%. I know him, he's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain, he doesn't feel remorse. He's a robot. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Ah, oh, don't talk about him that way. You make him barely sound human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So, Edgeworth uh, is on this one. He hasn't lost the case since he became a prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. Well, we've never lost the case either, guys. So, yeah. Of course, there are rumours of back alley deals and forged ev evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. Damn and stuff. Oh, there's a potted plant. Maya's favourite potted plant. Mia's favourite potted plant, anyway. Uh, I remember it had this bizarre name no one could ever remember. Oh, it's a cordyline stricter. There you go. Look, look, I'm in, I'm in, I was in the room the whole time, guys. It's a cordy line. <laughs> the sky is blue and so am I. There's that hotel right across the way. An old movie poster. Apparently this was the first movie that made uh, Mia cry when she saw it. I'll have to check it out one of these days. The horrendous amount of legal books here. Scary still is that Mia probably read all of these. Mia's desk. Perfectly clean as always. The only thing it's missing is Mia. Oh. Cordy line. Uh, Alright. Take that. Take that. I was wondering, did you see uh, Maya Faye's cell phone? Oh, that? I have that. Do you think you could give it back? Sure. I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh-oh, he's on to me. Tell him, tell him straight. If I tell him why I want it, there's no way he'll give it to me. Oh, come on. Something in the matter. Oh, no, it's just, you know, detective. I know nothing, pal. That cell phone has a lot of numbers on it, like her boyfriend's. A cell phone holds all a little girl's sweetest and spiciest secrets. <laughs> You're just trying to confuse me. Sorry, pal, I've already checked all the numbers in memory. Impressive. You're quite the detective. Uh-huh. Oh, here, you can have the phone back. There weren't any suspicious calls, uh, call records in there after all. Seems he didn't notice the recorded conversation. Jackpot. Got it. Check the court record to hear the recorded conversation. I guess I've asked all the questions I need to. You're all done, pal. Uh, yes, thank you. I'll be heading out now. Wait, one more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you better not. No influencing the witness with your lawyer, lawyer, lawyery ways, pal. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. We're not tampering with evidence. We are... Selectively eliminating unnecessary uh, items from court proceedings. Yep, that's what we're doing. Uh, the witness, yeah, Miss April May. Sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her except for her name and her location. Well, you just told me her name is Miss May, huh? So you, you've sent her home already, then. <laughs> You're trying your lawyer tricks on me now. Yeah, it's called secure. Yeah, Moo's right. It's called securing. 
she's not going to go outside her room until the trial. So, she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know a better... I guess I should know better than try to get a detective to leak information. Got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. Oh, this is one of those ones where it's like I can select a specific line of dialogue, huh? Um, nothing useful there. Let's go back to the detention center. Hey, what is it? Did you meet the lawyer? Sorry, I haven't seen him yet. I see. Hmm. I better go see if I can find this elite lawyer she's talking about. Can I? Here, take this. Watch out. That was the wrong button. Hey, I got your cell phone back. Oh, say, so, can I listen to my sister's voice? Aww. Listen to her sister's voice. Uh, her eyes are closed. She listens to every word with such intensity. Before long, tears begin to roll down her cheeks. Aww. There, there. Thank you. Got anything else to talk about? What about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young, and I don't know where my mother is. <gasps> you don't know, so she could still be alive. <gasps> the women in my family have been mediums for generations. They say uh, a lot of spiritual power runs in our blood. About 15 years ago, our family was involved in an incident. There was a man, and he, uh, he ruined our mother's life. <gasps> ruined? After that, she disappeared. Several years after that, my sister announced that she would become a lawyer and she left the mountain. Do you live by yourself? Yes, I've gotten used to it. Oh, also, I had to become independent or I would lose my powers. Huh? I feel bad for her all up. Uh, all by herself up on that mountain. Okay. So who was this man who ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir. Everyone was talking about it, apparently. The police were running out of leads and they were getting desperate. Wait, they didn't use spirit medium, did they? The police convinced my mother to try and contact the victim. So what happened? The case was solved. We fought. You fought. The man my mother helped the police capture was innocent. Police consultation. Uh, the police's consultation with a medium had all been carried out in secret, of course. But a man found out about it and leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud, and the media jumped on it big time. She, my mother, became a laughing stock for the nation. That's rough. That's rough. White. What? That was his name. My sister told me. White. Hmm. Try the lawyer again quickly. Yep. Guess we'll go to the Gatewater Hotel. September 6th. Room 303. Well, hello there, handsome. Uh, hi. Smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. <laughs> Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee, this is all all like something out of a movie and I should this is where you need someone who could do a valley girl impersonation and it would like make this totally better it's also exciting I can hardly contain myself let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewitness all right pity the lawyer that I pity the lawyer that has to cross-examine this one which is us though all right let's let's get this thing there's a screwdriver stuck in this drawer. I wonder what's inside. Let's take it. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? No touching. Oh god, she's gone crazy. She's gone crazy. She really shouldn't pry around in other people's rooms now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? Upset. I thought she was going to explode for a second there. I wonder what could be inside the drawer. The late summer sunlight 
streams through the window. There's the Fay and Co. office buildings, of course. You can see the inside of the room pretty clearly from here. I think it would be a little difficult to recognize a face from this distance, though. Ah, a still scene painting. Wait, shouldn't that be still life? Whatever. One of those is hanging on the wall. The flowers are fake. I know sunflowers and tulips, but that's about the extent of my floral knowledge. We're not much of a botanist, you see. Uh, a bottle and two glasses are on the table. Somebody must be staying with her. Bed. A simple bed. It's been recently made. Nothing eye-catching here. Uh, so it's just that screwdriver that we're not going to be able to get into. Let's try again. Hmm. What's inside, I wonder? Cough, cough, cough. Maybe later. Uh, let's talk. What you witnessed. Do you think you could tell me something? I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Just a few too many... Shut up. Oh, observe. Incident. You sound just like a lawyer in the movies. I like a man with a big vocabulary. And an extensive lexicon. Um, better not encourage her. Uh, you know that thing that um, happened the other day, the, the bad thing? What did you see when it happened? I don't suppose you could tell me about it, pretty please. Please. Let me see, well, dream on. If you want to know, you'll just have to come to court tomorrow, Mr. Boyer. Damn it. Damn it, me. Uh, who, who are you? Mr. Lawyer, are you hitting on me? No, no, I'm not. No, hey, I'm just doing my job. You're cute, right. I love, this game's great. You're cute when you blush. She does, she needs that Valley Girl accent, but I don't have one. So you're just out of luck, rascal. Believe me, this is the first time in my life I've ever blushed this much. <laughs> Right, uh, can you just tell me what it is you do? Well, no. <laughs> Great. And you had your little hopes up, didn't you? Well, she's clearly not employed then. I don't have any voice acting, Kathy. It's not that day today. Oh boy. Because Rascal's busy. Uh, I see there are two glasses on the table. Who's the other man, Miss May? Who's the other man? Oh, what an amazing power of observation. Just just use do the Valley Girl accent in your mind. It's all you need to do. You must be one of those famous detectives like on television. Oh, no, not me. I'm uh, just a lawyer. Say, Mr. Big Detective, why don't you go for clues in the garbage? Great. <laughs> Miss May doesn't like nosy little lawyers. <laughs> okay. Are we done here now? Can I present something that will make it go away? Here. It's my badge. Excuse me, but a witness. Police witness, you understand? How could I possibly give you any information in good conscience? The witness just like in the movies. Um. Hmm. Seems like Mr. Grossberg is out. Well, maybe I should just wait for him to come back. Ahem. If that wasn't the most over-the-top clearing of the throat I've ever heard. <coughs> oh, there he is. Aha, so you're the one this, they say has been looking for me. That's me. He looks even grander than I imagined. That badge in your collar. Ah, so you're a lawyer, are so, uh, you now? Yes, yes I am, say so, Badge right here. Yes, well, uh, what do you want? Uh, I'm not particularly busy these days, please proceed. Not busy, then how come no one could get in touch with you, huh? 
Hmm? Something the matter? You came to see the one and only Marvin Grossberg, did you not? His name's Marvin, we can't trust him. Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? Out with it. Um, well, so actually it's about uh, Maya, Maya Faye. Ah, yes, Maya Faye. Go on. Um, why the stranger? He's been paid off, guys. A cha cha cha. I'm really quite busy here. Mm -hmm. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's quite impossible. Wait a second. How did you know the trial was tomorrow? <laughs> anyway, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. Sorry, end of discussion. Good day. I said good day, sir. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? They didn't care. You're refusing. How can you just refuse like that? Please tell me why you won't take the case. It's because of Edgeworth, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, you see, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. Yeah, I'm busy. Far too busy. Uh, but the client is Maya Faye's sister. Mia. She trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands and you won't even take the case. Yes, yes, of course, I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. God dang it. Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Think not. What? What? Huh? Did you say something? Everybody's been paid off, guys. I think not, I said. What do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. But I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt will take on this particular case. Terribly sorry, my boy. Why? I cannot say. I beg your pardon, but could you leave now? I've got nothing more to discuss with you. What's going on here? How did you know? Mia Fey. She worked here a long time ago. Oh. Quite the apprentice, that one. He, She did all his work and got him all his fame, and now he's a terrible lawyer. Learned my techniques in the blink of an eye. She left one day quite suddenly. She had a mission, you see. A mission. You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion, never looked back. That painting. That's quite a painting. Ha ha ha, you've noticed. It's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Isn't it? The colour of the sky, the shape of the sea, the weave of the straw hat. That's a straw hat. It's worth at least three million. Three million dollars, three million yen, three million pesa. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it. Not even to you. I wasn't even interested. It's not for sale. I'm not buying. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look. Uh, can't present anything to you. Nothing else to say. Uh, fine. We'll just we'll just go do it ourselves. Three million hoodies. There's not that many hoodies. Hiya. Oh, you're back. Did you find the lawyer? Um, well, what do I tell her? Well, see, just be honest. I really don't think you should use that guy. He didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. <laughs> what really happened? You don't mean he refused to help. Um, I see. I've been abandoned. She's been abandoned, guys. Nobody can afford three million goopies, Kathy. Just a little longer now before the state-appointed lawyer comes, I guess. 4 p.m. Time's up. What should I do? Do I just leave her and go home? Let's defend her. I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you whether you want me to or not. Why? Why? Well... No one is as sad as a person without any friends. I know, I've been there a long time ago. And then we met Larry. And things just went downhill from there. Why did you become a lawyer in the first place? Because someone has to look out for the people who have no one on their side. Maya, uh, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. Uh, Cordiette Law. That's so kind of you. So sad. 
gonna cry. Well, let's fight this one and get you out of here. Right, thank you. Phew. She's smart at last. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. You're innocent, right? 100% you're innocent? Because I've, I've only got guilty, guilty pleas in all my clients currently. Yes, and I trust you. So you trust me too, okay? I definitely trust you. It's a deal. What's next? There's something that's been bugging me. It's that screwdriver in that, that, that drawer. Just what was inside that strange woman's drawer. It was when I tried to look into that drawer, she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Gonna have to break into the hotel, guys. <gasps> Good afternoon, sir. It's a bow boy. Excuse me, you are... Ah, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment at your service. Alright, uh, I've just come up to deliver room service. Uh, do you know where Miss May might be? Uh, I believe I guess Miss May is currently using the uh, facilities. If you're no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yes, I shall now... Wait. Wait, well, no! Why does it seem like every time I come up here I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance. Let's get... Ah, I almost forgot. Came back quick. <laughs> Might I ask you to inform Miss May there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. The plot's thickening. That's a white and a blue. We're just missing the red now. Right, sure. Miss... The white of Blue Corp. Where have I heard that name before? Anyway. White, that was his name. My sister told me. Can I get the screwdriver now, please? Uh, white was the name of the guy who ruined Maya and Maya's mother. Could it be a coincidence? Probably. Anyway. Let's get this screwdriver. There's a screwdriver sticking out of that half-open drawer. Now's my chance. What do we have here? <gasps> a wiretap. Hmm. What would a blue? What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? Wiretap added to the court record. There's definitely something suspicious about this, Miss May. Why? Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind all this. I know it. All right. I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial for sure. We won't put it through like. A proper um, chain of ev evidence, whatever it like. There's a chain of evidence you need to do. We're not going to do that. We're just going to bring it out in court, last minute, uh, for Maya's sake. I'll get this woman. Uh, I'll get to this woman's. Wait, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll get at the bottom of this. Bellboy still there? Uh oh, time to scrap. I look forward to tangoing with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. Dun, 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 dun. Oh no, to be continued. Yeah. We will do the trial and then I'll probably call it a... Uh... It had to be specified, yeah. I think I think after we get through this court section, we will uh, call it a day. Ah, it's Edgeworth. Look at him. So smug. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fair. The prosecution is ready. Look at him. Look at him. He's so... He's so bored. The defense is ready. Let's go. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weaknesses today or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. 
I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Then let's begin. Uh, if we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene. Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name or profession to the court. Sir, my name is Dick Gumshoe. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well. Uh, let me use this floor map of the office to explain. He's got a floor map, guys. He's very professional. The body was found by this window here, you see. And the cause of death... Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object. Yep. The murder weapon was a statue of the finger found next to the body. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hands. <gasps> the court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Law plans have been added to the court record. I'm going to forget the sir, guys. Now, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Witness testimony. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There was... There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya. Uh, yeah, can't speak. Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the moment of the murder. That's a lie. Hmm. The very moment, you say? Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross examine what? Mm, I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. Smack. Hey. Maya just threw something at me. When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Let's go. Let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor, I would like to begin my cross-examination. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Alright, what have we got? I mean, technically you didn't. Pressure me. Why is that? What's your reason? I've messed up. Right, actually, that's the one. That one there. Just one second. If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence. She did it, correct? It, did I say that? Me? No. I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. <laughs> exactly, what about the suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? Ms. May, Ms. May is the suspicious and she sure isn't pink, pal. Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, hmm. I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes, wait, what? No! Sorry, I've got the, ord uh, the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. He's going to bring up the paper, guys. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya, Maya uh, was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. <laughs> How'd you like that? That's my hard evidence. That's more substantial than a wit uh, witness, I guess. Mm, before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. 
Your Honor. Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of information the first time? Uh, I'm really embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. <laughs> Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where we go from here. Here we go from here, guys. After securing this suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. Uh, I found a memo written on a piece of paper next... Oh, Detective Gumshoe, do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? <laughs> well, I've got to do something inconsistently, don't I? Sure, it happens all the time in books and the movies, so this isn't a movie detective. Let's talk about reality, shall we? I guess I haven't heard of many cases. No, he looks so sad. Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister? Ah, yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Stop right there. The witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. I'm Edgeworth. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. <laughs> order. Order. That didn't go so well. That's right. What he said. That's his whole testimony. Okay. There has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. Let's find it. Um... I don't, I don't have, I don't have, um, get out of here. Stupid bot. Um. I don't, I don't have a bottle of water to hand at the moment. All I have is a, a can of water. That's all I've got. I should get some hoot coins though, that'd be a good idea. Um, after securing the suspect, I'm gonna press on this one. I was talking about the bot. Did you find any evidence? Now, now, don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen, I'm getting to the good part. I got a bad feeling about this. No, you didn't. I found the note. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Ho oh, ho ho, then who did write it, Smarty Pants? Wait, who? Uh, uh, I did. Uh, the killer definitely did, yep. Anyone can see that. <laughs> You're saying that the killer wrote her own name? Buddy, please. <laughs> she was framed. <laughs> Hold on. Is that the case? If that's the case, where's your evidence? Damn it, Edgeworth! Don't bring... Don't... <laughs> I guess there was a bit of a tall order for you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Shut up, Edgeworth. Yeah, pal. Ugh. Alright, fine. Tell us what was written on that memo you found. What have we actually got in evidence right now? <gasps> Hang on a second. Detective Gumshoe, there's no, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You said the victim... My F.A. wrote this note. Yeah. Uh, 
Hang on a second. No, I don't need to pee too often. It's just people are being noisy. It's annoying. All right, where were we? I am. Um, that she was accusing the defendant, Maya, Maya Fay, Maya Fay. Really, what you're saying? What? This isn't one of those lawyer lawyer tricks, now, is it? Yeah, but I hear them, Kathy, and that's all that matters. Of course you wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Backwards. The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death to, due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No but butting your way out of this one, detective. Order. Order. Defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had time to write anything down. Objection. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? Wait, when? Uh... Uh... Um... Uh, the, the day after the murder? It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... The finger waggle. That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. <gasps> what? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Of course it was. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. Yeah, of course it was. And of course it was. Convenient. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way. Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write. I, Mayor? Mayor. That is all I see. Damn you, Edgeworth! Should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? I'm a sham. Um. Let's attack Edgeworth directly. Let's go. Edgeworth, I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. Damn it. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will. The evidence in this report is undeniable. Except for when it is. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. Uh, I may have lived for a few minutes after being here. Okay, fine. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose the obvious. Uh, suppose that's the obvious conclusion. Yes. I rest my case. Clearly, Don. This isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. 
This poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. She comes. Let the witness Miss April May take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent. <laughs> Witness your name, please. April May, at your service. <laughs> Can't actually wink. Can't, I can't wink, guys. Order. An introduction um, should not require any reaction from the crowd. <laughs> the witness will refrain from wanton winking. <laughs> never. Never, rascal, never. Ah, oh, yes, Your Honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like totally in my like hotel room. Yeah. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from Fay Co. Law Offices. And that's right. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Witness testimony. Here we go. It was like 9 o'clock at night. I looked out of the window, you know. And then I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But the girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. <gasps> then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped, which you wouldn't have been able to see from the window. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy bitsy. <laughs> God damn it. Hmm. Well, Your Honor, I see. It's a remarkably solid testimony. But there's only one major flaw that I haven't found yet. Don't seem a need to trouble this witness any objection. Yes, Mr. Wright, I'm allowed to I'm allowed to cross examine. It's like my right as a lawyer. What about my cross examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were you were Miss Maya Faye's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults is in perfectly good testimonies. <gasps> hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yeah, I'm doing it. I will gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. Has to have some kind of weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Alright, what can we pick fault with? Dodge what? Of the attack. Please continue to test. Ah, oh, god dang it. Where did she catch up, huh? How did you know it was my client, huh? Well, I. First of all, she had a girl's physique. And secondly, she was small. Who else could it be but her? She has a point. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. Because I want to lose a point, clearly. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that you're lying. 
Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Yep. Ooh, she didn't like that one. Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes. What is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, May F.A., you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Dun, dun, dun. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except for her. She has terrible fashion sense. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her, and so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May, huh? Huh? Oh, what are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary. They were always necessary. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please admit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be great. I, I promise. Uh, your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had it. Need to figure something else out. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it, I did. That that clock, um, that kind of statuey clock, the thinker, I think. But well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. Okay, I will. This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are they? Oh, damn it. Come on. They are, not they? They are! Come on, they ran off! God damn it. Stupid game. But she ran off to the right! Press, where did this weapon come from? She picked it up from the desk. Let's see. What sort of weapon was it? A clock, uh... How can you say Being pedantic, game. Being pedantic. Is that right as in your right as you look from the hotel? Which hand do I hold my knife in again? <laughs> right, it was my right hand, right? That if I miss the right, please continue so it'd be to the left. So they went this way. The desk is over there. Well, don't look so sad. <gasps> <gasps> I've just realised. I've realised. Don't look so sad, Mr. Lloyd. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. May. What you said right now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Naughty lawyer. <laughs> Shut up, Deffy. You just said that this statue of the Finca was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Here. 
another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too. And he was found guilty of murder. <laughs> Shut up, rascal. <laughs> order, order. Ms. May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? The witness saw the murder with her own eyes, that's all that's important here. The defence is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You, you will withdraw your question, Mr. Brown. <laughs> but questions are all I have, Your Honour. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. <laughs> that one time. <laughs> Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Phew, that was close. If you stop me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So what happens then? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Well, that... Because uh, I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. In... From across the... From across the street. So you've been to the law offices of Fay & Co. No. Hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. The law offices of Fay & Co, where the murder took place, isn't very close to the hotel. She could... Wait, uh, she could have easily heard the clock. Oh. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, I'm not. Because the clock can't speak. No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because it couldn't have rung. Your Honour, the members of the court. It is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly just take a look right now? See anything interesting, Your Honour? It's as the defence says. This clock is missing its clockwork. Oh my god. It's quite empty. <laughs> Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. <laughs> fat. That's the thing she's going to take issue with. <laughs> well, Miss May. Tisk tisk. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. Quite a show. Knew the clock was empty somehow. He knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? It was after the witness heard the clock. Then there uh, is no contradiction. <laughs> hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. That is... And that is exactly what happened, Your Honour. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Yes, I can. Oh, oh, impossible, of course. I have proof. Huh? What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is this. Take, that. Take a look at this. It's a phone. It's very cute cell phone. Oh, oh. You have a girly phone. <laughs> wait, wait. This is this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order. The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. The good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. <laughs> Poor Gumshoe. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. You just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then, if you could. Ah, I should probably tell you that it's not, yeah, it's not working, that's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. 
September 9. Uh, no, September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Which was the morning. Not that kind of order, Lurker. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear. The clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Well, Miss May, would you like to explain this to the court? Just how did you know the weapon was a clock? Well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? I, I go to so many, but it's it's a custard. There's only two of them. Oops, I forgot. But the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defendant have any objections? Yes, I do. The witness claimed she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Chow! It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible. Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, ah, oh, we, we've been working on that one all day, guys. Oh, excuse, excuse is not on sale today. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, no, now she's going to reveal her true colors. Now she's turned evil. What's it to you, porcupine head? <laughs> that stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! <laughs> Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Huh? Oh, <laughs> silly me. Did I, um, like, lose it? Like, totally? I guess I did. <laughs> Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm. Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon of... You knew the weapon was a clock because you had heard about it. Witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. And I will show you how. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Watch out. Have a look at this. Oh, oh, that, that, that. I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim. Miss Maya Faye's phone, were you not? Oh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. Ha! Troubles me that our witness has. Witnesses in possession of a word wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which is not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we see that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. So we haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to me. Again, what is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue of the thinker and it tells you the time. Miss April May. You used the wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. 
Every evidence is admissible, Deffy. Am I wrong? I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. She's turning into the exorcist. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? I did not tap her phone. I did not. It's May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right? You, you lawyer. I missed half of that because I clicked too much. No fair, all of you ganging up on me like that. <laughs> Found the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? Yeah. She's crying now. That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question! Do I have to? Isn't there's a murder trial? Isn't tippity tapping uh, irrelevant? She's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Ms. May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Ha! I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I, s I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? She can read our mind. She's good. Well, you're not the first man who's fought that, and of course I can and I will. You can't be serious. No way. It's a lie. Way. I say way. Oh, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Okay, so the killing happened at around 9. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from the sweet bellboy. Room service? Iced coffee, I believed it was. Iced coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quickly, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. Iced coffee? No, you can't apologize in advance. It's too late. It's too late to apologize. I think I'm making I think I'm making this up. Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder, but she said that she Where does that leave us? My great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant may commit murder, but you just said that she didn't. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? I'm um, kind of thinking some. Let's call the bellboy. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here and I'm gonna to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition. If Ms. April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognise that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby you must also expect the verdict of guilty on Miss May of Fay. That is my condition. But I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Mayor will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Fine, let's do this. Alright, I've got nothing to lose except for, well, everything. Understood, I accept your challenge. I mean, condition. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> but right into my trap. I play Dark Magician into attack mode. Uh oh. Uh. Very well, the court calls the Hotel Bellboy to the stand.
I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. The tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good. Let's go. I'm the head bellboy at the Fine Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call at uh, call after eight in the evening from my guest Miss May. She asked for a nice coffee to be brought to her at nine o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course, and delivered the iced coffee to I guess Miss May herself. Let's now begin the cross examination. Right, I'm ready, I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. He and crumpets. Those are, those are biscuits, though. Okay. What have we got in evidence? Press this. Sure it was Miss May on the phone. Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? I checked Miss May in person, sir. But you're a bellboy! Not only did I see her in all her stunning... Oh, I guess you could take the bags up, I guess. Um, the stunning radiance, but also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I... Ahem. Ahem. The point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Yes, what then? Mm. Nine o'clock on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. So. Time of the murder. I brought it to her precisely across the time. So how'd you know it's precisely 9 o'clock? Precisely, exactly, and most definitely 9 p.m. You so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that, I, that it be brought then because she wanted an alibi. Well, boy, I'd like an iced coffee at exactly 9. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine. Why would she be so particular about the time? Because she wants an alibi. You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir, it is an, an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you are so very certain? Uh, well, I brought the room service, sir. She, the guests uh, favoured me with um, an em embrace. <laughs> in a French for embrace? <gasps> French for kiss, sir. But, but not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. But then how could she be looking out the window? Where would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was mom momentarily swayed by my prim demeanour, sir. It was a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. Oh, that was pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. No good. There's nothing there. Is that it? It's finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination. Here. Hmm. It was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest! Wait. Please wait. Yes, does the defence have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Objection! Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. It's a charade. Charade? Charade. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question, that's all. Okay, this is it. Now, this is my last chance. What do I ask him?
Tell me again about room service. Again, sir? Exactly nine. I delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. The guests had requested iced coffee. Eighteen dollars was the charge, as I recall. Why are they using dollars in Japan? I see. Eighteen dollars? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Yes, well, iced coffee for two, you know. And we don't skimp on the ice, sir. What did he say? What did you say? Uh, uh, rather quite. Well, boy, tell us the truth now. Or someone else staying in Miss May's room. Objection. I object. That that was objectionable. <laughs> Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this earlier in your testimony? Well, sir, you uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That that's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, yes, quite. Indeed. It, it was a good uh, barrister there, Mr. Edward, who... I see. He asked me not to mention if it, if it wasn't specifically asked. Dun dun dun. Edgeworth, you've been... Your trap has been reversed. You fool. <laughs> I've done it now. I've won. I think we're a bit preemptive, but yeah. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man. Correct, yes, sir. Then when you brought them room service, you didn't see that the you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Mm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it is impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright, is this other person? Simple, it was. The man will miss me. Mr. White. The man who checked in will miss me. Runner, as has been previously revealed, Miss May Miss April May was tapping the victims fine, yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. I want a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late. I suppose you'd like it. If it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. <laughs> Upstart amateur. These accu accusations are ludicrous. Enough. Court acknowledges the defence's argument. I expect the prosecution and defence to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes, Your Honour. That's uh, that is all for today. Uh, that is all today. The trial of May F A. Uh, court is adjourned. Yay! We didn't. We didn't lose. September seventh. It's the right. You were amazing in there. Really? I mean, I might be your newest fan. <laughs> That's good. I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> and again, that other attorney was pretty cool too. Don't fall for him. Stupid Edgeworth. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips. It sent sh shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so. So what happens with me? You go back to jail. No, you, go you don't get to go home now. No, I don't think so, not yet. Oh, I see. But I've got a great lead in today's trial. A lead. That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention centre now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he's... He was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Oh. Don't worry, I'll find it by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. Of course you are. Everybody counts on Cordy. And then gets disappointed. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. 
The victim dodged an attack, then ran to the right, but she was caught and struck. That's the only part of her testimony that's not been struck. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Hey, it doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. To be continued. I think this is a good point to, lead, to, to end off on. Save. And I don't know if I'm at work tomorrow. I need to check with my boss. If I'm not at work, we'll play again. Um, if I am, I'll figure something out. But uh, we'll see. Um, I'll get back to you guys. I'll let you know on Discord and Twitter and all that jazz. Uh, thanks for hanging out for two and a half hours. I hope you had a good time. Uh, I might play something in a couple of hours, but um, I need to sort some other stuff out now. Glad you guys enjoyed it. I'll hopefully see you for the next one. Um, if I don't, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.